Hey everybody, this is Pastor Lupe and I am broadcasting from uh, my office or my study at home. Um, our Wednesday evening service was going to be uh, really lightly attended because of, you know, the cold and flu that's going through a lot of the um, area. And so we decided just to shift things a little bit. And here I am uh, talking to you from home. And you can hear it in my voice a little bit, too. I just had a couple of sniffles the past couple of three days, a couple of, couple of days. So, um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed your, I hope you enjoyed your Christmas. We had, we had kids everywhere. Um, they were outside, inside, dog following them. Oh, my goodness, did we eat and, uh, and celebrate, you know, the Lord's, um, the Lord's birth, Christmas. Uh, the whole nativity, um, you know, the whole nativity um, celebration. And so it was a lot of fun. We had a great time. And it's just wonderful to be able to come together with you guys, just to be able to touch base, to see how you're all doing. Hope, hopefully, we're praying, for, we're praying for all of those that are sick today. Um, there's, you know, several who have come down and tested positive with COVID. Uh, many of them, all they've had is uh, not tested positive, but have the have a cold and so we've decided to do this up um, looking forward to the new year hopefully that um, looking forward to the new year on Sunday morning we talked about Isaiah chapter 9 and uh, very very hopeful for New Year's you know New Year uh, plans and expectations especially when you put the Lord in the middle of everything it's great to be able to look at uh, the prospects of a new year and with the hope and the strength and the presence of God with us. And so that's kind of neat to be able to see, you know, see how that goes along. So um, just wanted to, you know, kind of touch base with you on that. Uh, I don't see many of you uh, piping in yet. I see one person that just kind of come on. Who is this? Who just came on? <laughs> hey. So it is the holiday week. So there's been a lot of, you know, either... You're all staying home, uh, or there's a lot of movement taking place. I see that happening right now too. So, one of the um, one of the things that we're going to be studying tonight is uh, Deuteronomy chapter eleven, and um, just to let you know about Deuteronomy is that I wanted to skip Deuteronomy and go straight to entering into the Promised Land, uh, you know, with Joshua, and just go straight into 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 the promised land entering entering Joshua but I'm glad that we went ahead and we stopped by and um, really started looking at Deuteronomy it has a totally different flavor than um, you know the first you know the first books and and uh, it is more of a admonition more of a preaching thing that Moses does and you can hear it he's talking in the um, he's talking in the first person I mean he's really talking like he's preaching to them and telling them that they need to really get their things together and, and move forward. So um, you'll hear that. Uh, the last, last week we went ahead and we talked a little bit about God's rehearsing his mercy. Uh, the Israelites, as they came, God goes back and, and uh, reminds them of his power in delivering them from Egypt and how he defeated them. Uh, how he defeated the Egyptians. And so we see him doing that, but then we he also reminds them of how they didn't apply their faith to God or they didn't believe God. So they constantly were fighting God or doubting God. It just didn't help them at all. And then God sent them through the desert for 40 years. They wandered. And uh, they fi and fi God finally brought them right here up to um, up to Ammon, which is really Ammon and Moab area, where it's right across the city of Jericho. And if you recall, uh, the city of Jericho is the first, you know, the first city that they they uh, actually go and attack in the Promised Land. You'll you'll you remember that. So God reminds them of that, and and He does tell them, you know, that. That God does require some things, and that was for them to keep His commandments and, and really stay focused 
on God's goodness and his mercy through his commandments. So, and he tells him, you know, I want, don't, he says, uh, circumcise your, the foreskins of your heart and be stiff necked no longer. Because they were, like I said, he, they were really rebellious towards God. And God was really reminding them that he wants to do good for them, but they need to fear him, serve him, and hold, uh, and, you know, hold on to his name. So in chapter 11, he, 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 uh, he really includes, he really talks to them and tells them that they need to, therefore you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge and his statutes, his judgments and his commandments always. And, um, and he reminds them that if they keep every commandment uh, that he commands them, that they will be strong and go in and possess the land which you cross over to possess. So there's a lot of strength in obeying God and just knowing God. When you know God, you're serving him out of um, out of love rather than, you know, just a strict obedience. I, I think a lot of people think that, you know, obeying his commandments is strict obedience. And God is somewhat removed from, um, you know, from our hearts. You no, know, when... God is in the God when you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You want to please Him in everything that you do, and um, and 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 therefore the commandments are easy. It's easy to to um, to move on from there. So anyway, um, verse eighteen, chapter eleven of of uh, Deuteronomy eleven. It says, therefore. He said, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul and bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be frontlets between your eyes. And just a little bit here, what he's talking about, he says, you know, you need to lay up these words of mine. Uh, God's words are life. Uh, Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so his words are life to us and they're life to me. I, I enjoy coming together and, and sharing these words with you. And he said, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart. So the only way you get them in, the, in your heart is to be able to get them in through your ears. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we've got to spend as much time as we can, you know, listening to his, his, his words and and he says, lay these up, lay these words of mine up in your heart, and in your soul. So that's um, your you, you know your heart is where your mind is, and your soul is where your a lot of your feelings are. So you want to attach both of those together. You know, I once read a book. It was called The Death of Reason and Logic. It was published in nine. I don't I don't remember when it was published, but it was talking about about 1963 when um, you know when um, oh, a lot of things happened in our education system, and it and it started and it's they started talking about the me generation. It was the me generation. Everything was about you know um, me and no one else, and we had to be thinking about ourselves as individuals rather than you know how it affects everybody else around us. And so it became a you know if it feels good, do it. And when he says, therefore, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart and in your soul, the soul is the part that we feel. And I know that, you know, as we put our faith in God's word, we, we, God then comes in and confirms that, it, not only in our conscience, but also in, in, the, in our feelings. And I think that's really important to really be able to know and feel God, um, you know, in, you know, know him in your mind and feel him in your heart. And soul, and then he says, "Bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes." And what he is saying here is just make sure that you make sure that you're remembering God. Um, the Jews used to have these little boxes that used, you know, they were called frontlets, and um, and and they would bind these with uh, with um, leather cords around their arm, but there were little boxes that held portions of scripture in there and it would help remind them throughout the day that you know this is you know this is what i'm being reminded of is to serve the lord 
um, and, and, and in, in that word. So he's talking about that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hi, Karen. It's good to see you on. <laughs> the opposite of Jesus is who wants us to think of others. Yeah. So that's what, that's what, and here, here comes the other thing too. And they shall be frontlets between your eyes. And the same thing happened here is that you would put the, the word of God. We need to think about God first. Above all things, we need to be, uh, we need to think about God because he is the one that leads us to think about others. And in doing so, then God takes care of us. And I like the fact that God takes care of us. He really does. Uh, you know, a lot of times we're, we're motivated by fear, doubt, uh, we don't think we're going to have enough. And so what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're we're connected with God enough that we know and trust God. Uh, and and just rejoice in the fact that he is watching over us, taking care of us in all things. Now, in verse 19, and I just hit that one verse, verse 18, and I just got, got up to that. So it's our responsibility to know God. Okay? Hey, Pastor. Hi, Karen. So... Now here comes the real here comes the real meat of everything you know because in Arizona right now we have I, I in Arizona we have a 12.7 billion dollar budget okay that's with a b billion dollar budget now the education system in Arizona is 6.3 over half of the uh, uh, just about half it's yeah, it's actually ha over half uh, I may be misquoting uh, that last number. Um, just about half of that budget is dedicated to education. Now, this next verse, it's telling the parent, the Christian, or the or God's people. He said, "You shall teach these statutes and judgments, my words. You shall teach them to your children." It is the responsibility of each um, godly parent to teach their children the word of God. Not only it teach them, and the word teaching is more, more than just, you know, classroom setting. It is living it, it is demonstrating it, it is requiring it of them that they need to do that. And, and also forbidding them to get involved in certain things. Now, I know that we don't, you know, we fail in, in parenthood. And what we need to do is we need to repent of our failure and say, and ask God to help us. To be able to teach our children what is really those things that are really important. There's so there's too many things out there. The devil has laid so many traps out there that can destroy the hearts of our children today. And what we need to do is we need to teach them exactly what's what is going on today with all of the uh, critical race theory and evolution and all that kind of stuff that goes on. And you know, uh, not knowing how marriage works. Uh, how to honor one another and love one another. It's there's a lot of traps out there that you know and also the you know also financial traps out there. People are not uh, teaching their children how to get around that kind of stuff. So what we need to do is we really need to it says you shall teach them the words of God to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house. Now that means that we're talking to our children. And we need to talk to them about that kind of stuff. And I'm, I, I feel really blessed because my children attend services, and uh, and and they get a real double whammy because they, they're in in church, but they're also here at, at, at um, oh, they're also here at home and they're hearing you know hearing about the word of God, and I joke about that. Even my dog, I talk to it and tell it, you're a Christian, you're a Christian dog. Don't you forget that. <laughs> and I, I do. I really do talk to my dog that way because I want it. You know, I just, I'm just feeling like our our household is blessed, and that we need to be able to, you know, remember the blessing of God and and speak those blessings. So he said, "You shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way." So when you're, you know, walking around Walmart and stuff like that, or you're driving down the road, you know, are you singing? Are you singing? Scripture verses, or are you talking to them about, you know, God and that kind of stuff? Yeah, it's really important that we do that. He says, when you lay down, you know, when you're rest, when you're, you know, at ease. He says, when you're laying down, talk to them. Talk to your children. This means that we're communicating with our children. And we have to be really, 
just right there talking to our children. Uh, and then when you rise up in the morning, you know, just, you know, greet them, uh, greet them and remind them that God is with us right then and there. It's really important that we, uh, we do that. Uh, one of our, one of our twin girls used to rise up and say, good morning, God, and raise her hands up in the air and say, good morning, God, you know, and when you start, when you start looking at that kind of, you know, when you start watching children do that kind of thing, you re, you really feel blessed over that kind of thing. So it's good. It's really great. And, um, and then it says, and you shall write them down on the doorposts of your house and on your gates that your days and the days of your children may be multiplied in the land, which the Lord, your, which the Lord swore to your forefathers to give them like the days of the heavens above the earth. Now, it does talk about, you know, it does talk about writing these things on the on on your doorposts and on your gates of your house. So we're supposed to have reminders up on the, you know, on, on the doorposts, gates and on the walls. Um, the other day I was I was at the gym and I was on the I was on the on the bicycle and I'm moving away. And one of the things, you know, that just kind of hit me was that there's several you know, there's several sayings that are being painted on the wall, you know, don't give up, um, you know, uh, you know, kind of no pain, no gain, um, you know, every step will count, things like that. And as I was reading some of those, I thought, you oh, know, that's really encouraging to the people that are there. And that's exactly what God wants from uh, Christian parents is to put things up on the walls that will remind your children of what and what it means to serve God. And so I think that's really important that we do that. And, uh, and it says, you know, when you do that, that, you, that your days and the days of your children may be both multiplied in the land. That means that we will have a long, good life uh, that's been promised to us by God. And I think that that's really important that we have that promise. You know, we don't have to fear, you know, uh, death and that kind of thing like a lot of people are doing today that is totally up in God's hands and remember that you know those of you that are watching remember that that uh, it's God who holds your life in, in in your hands not you know not these false prophets like Fauci and you know the CDC and and some of the other things that are going on around us you know it's been all doom and gloom and that's not any good you know we need to be able to Really stand strong in the Lord and and just rely and let people know that we're relying on Him and not necessarily on all of the bad news that's going on around us. So now look at verse twenty two in, in Deuteronomy eleven. He says, "For if you carefully keep all my commandments which I command you to do, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, and to hold fast to Him," he said, "Then the Lord will drive out." All these nations from before you, and you will dispossess greater and mightier nations than yourselves. You know, the you know we talk a lot about the the the, the you know the United States being polarized today, and that's because we hold to a you know certain teachings, values, and and traditions, and the world is holding on to their values teachings and, tra and and traditions as well and one of the things that he says is that you will drive them out you will you will be successful if you do not give up the distinction of being the people of God by walking in the commandments of God I, I'll never apologize for what God teaches ever and over you know over uh, over the book of numbers and Leviticus what one of the things that we talked about was the laws of God you know, how to teach your children, what to teach your children. Yeah, that God is creator. God is the first scientist. He was the one that put it together. And and we know how the world operates because it was God who put it together and tells mm -hmm. us exactly how what it's all about. It's really important to do that. And then you look at the book of Job and there's like 47, 49 scientific questions. And he answers some of them. Others have not been even... They have not been answered at all. And there are 
there are Christians who are scientists and, and uh, they're, they've looked at a lot of this, this kind of stuff and have made major discoveries. So it's really important that we teach our children that God has, you know, God is the one that put it, this all together. In fact, you know, I think about the movie Nemo and the Eastern Australian Current, you know, and it's, it, what, these currents run real strong through the ocean and their pathways, their pathways of in the ocean, like roadways. And uh, there was a scientist who read that in the book of Job, that there were, you know, pathways in the sea. And guess what he discovered? He discovered pathways in the sea. And now we have, you know, the Australian, the, East, uh, the Australian Eastern Current or the Eastern Australian Current that you remember the, the turtles were all floating the way and that and saying, hey, man, this is cool. <laughs> yeah, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. So we need to teach our children and speak of them, you know, when you sit down in your house and walk and, and, and do that. And it, it talks about that when we do this kind of stuff, that they will have a regard for God and have a much higher regard for their life. They will find purpose in life and they will also find a way to love and honor and respect their human fellow beings. And I think that's so important today. And so, yes, our lives will be multiplied. Yes, we will have longer lives uh, and, and we're not, you know, uh, we're not killing each other. And this is one of the things that we need to strive for in our, in our, in our, in our society today, in our, in our America today, is that we get back to the Word of God. And, and yes, there is right and wrong. And, and yes, there are winners and losers. There are saints and sinners. Some will go to heaven and some will go to hell. And uh, we need to understand that, that, um, that that happens. So he says, you know, you'll drive out all these nations before you and you will dispossess greater and mightier nations than yourselves. Every place, and this is a neat, this, verse 24 is really great. And we'll read it down to, oh, I guess I better stop right here um, after I read this. He says, um, every place on which your foot shall tread, I will, I have given it to you. And, you know, and there's a song that is talked about, that it talks about that. Every place on which your foot shall tread, I, shall, I have given it to you from the wilderness of Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the western sea, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will put a dread of you and the fear of you upon all the land where you tread, just as he said to you. What a blessing. Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. And so now we're looking at that as, you know, either a blessing or a curse. I want, I want, I want the blessing of God. I want the blessing of God on my, on my, uh, on my life and not the curse. And there is a way to avoid the curse. You know, the wages of sin is what? It's death. And to walk in God's commandments is life. And that's a no brainer. You know, I want to be blessed. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I command you today and the curse, if you do not obey the commandment of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I commanded you today and go after other gods which you have not known. We need to be careful. Last week I did talk a little bit about the other gods that, that are available out there, and they're everywhere. You just have to know God, know His commandments, and then know what's going on around you. So... And it shall be when the Lord your God has brought you into the land which you go and possess that you shall put a blessing on Mount Gerizim and a curse on Mount Ebal. They are not on the other side of the Jordan. And uh, and yes, on the other side of the Jordan. Toward the setting of the sun, the land of the Canaanites who dwell in the plain opposite Gilgal beside the Terebinth Terbin trees of Morah. For you will cross over the Jordan and go in and possess the land which the Lord your God has given you. And you will possess it and dwell in it. And you shall be careful to observe all the statutes and judgments which I set before you today. I like the fact that we're right here. In, in just a few days, we're going to be in 2022. We, we have a new year coming right up. And it's like crossing over and starting something new. 
This is what the this is what the Israelites were looking at. We're crossing over, starting something new. But he says here, you're going to cross over and you're going to possess the land that the Lord has given you, and you shall possess it and dwell in it. I think that's a really good promise for us and 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 the new um, the new life. That I mean, a, a new promise for a new year. And as we look at uh, 2022, let's go in and um, let's go with the attitude that we're going in to possess a whole new year. And we're going to do it in understanding who God is and also uh, standing strong on on the on the judge on the judgments that God has given us. I will not give up the blessing just to be accepted by man. Uh, I want God's blessing on our lives, on my my family life, on the church, on my community, and now our state. And so this is one of the things that we're going to do. And you shall be careful to observe all the statutes, gut judgments, which I set before you today. And they're the common sense one. You know, um, they're the common sense kind of judgments and statutes. Um, you know, just, and I covered some of those last week. If you want to go back and look at that, you can. We talked about marriage right at the end of the message. We talked about uh, several different things, about seven different, uh, you know, th thought things that I thought about that we needed to get back to. Um, you know, just the standard of marriage, the standard of education, um, you know, being able to stand strong on God's side and, and move forward. So that's that will do it for tonight. Um, uh, we finished off chapter 11 and we'll get into chapter 12. Um, next week, I think, uh, we will have a Wednesday evening service. <clears throat> See, I've got a scratch in my throat. <coughs> we'll have a Wednesday evening service, um, and we'll have our regular, um, you know, gathering. And then Ron will bring about, Ron, Ron will bring the songs. And I may be in, um, in Phoenix, um, streaming live. So this will be... This is a good, you know, this is good, a good run for a live stream, uh, a live stream. Let me know how you, let me know how you like that. And then, um, and also, you know, also join us for our Sunday morning service at uh, 1015. Um, I'm usually coming on at about um, 1040, 45. Uh, it's just because of the music that we use. Uh, they kind of ding us on that because of the uh, copyright laws and stuff like that. But anyway, Mary, uh, have a happy new year. I, uh, we're, we're just in the cusp of, uh, you know, turning the page into a brand new year, starting off with day one. And, uh, it, it'll be a, it'll be a good year. We're, we're really hanging on to the fact that God is going to bless us abundantly. And so God bless you as y'all go. I'm going to go ahead and sign off now and, uh, have a wonderful evening and.